Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. time for math in the real world everyone's favorite part of the show we are here today man what a neat neat place we're here today at woodwing specialty and we want to speak a little bit with the owner of woodwing specialty pete plump pete we are glad that you could join us today thanks well, so much to my shop yeah great this is cool here. tell us where we are and what the heck happens here because there's a lot of really cool looking stuff here well, this is an FAA approved repair station for wood aircraft structures. So I, I don't do any aluminum work or anything like that. No riveting or very little because I don't like it. But I do like to uh, glue and, and nail little tiny pieces together to make these big, huge wings that hold up large airplanes. These are, these are uh, airplanes that, that weigh 3,000 pounds. And uh, some of them carry one person, some two, some four. Um, Man, what a yeah. unique deal. So these are a little bit smaller airplanes than some of the ones we might see in the air, but they're made out of wood and that's, that's right. a different type of deal. How did you get involved with this? Because this is a unique niche in the aviation area, right? It is a, it is a unique niche. Back in the, early, uh, well, in the early 1900s, all the way up through World War II, uh, all these airplanes were made out of wood. Uh, aluminum air, aircraft structures didn't come in until after the war, pretty much. Uh, so these wings that I'm working on now date back to the 1940s mostly and there are very few of us that maintain these because it's not taught in aviation schools anymore. Right. Uh, so and I'm, they don't I'm, build them brand new anymore either, right? Is that true? They don't build them brand new okay. uh, and uh, I'm one of maybe a handful of people that even know how to do this kind of work anymore. So it's very unique. Very unique. Yeah. And so because it's so unique, I really want to know how did you get started in this because it is <laughs> It is different. It's so yeah. neat. Well, I was um, 18 years old. I was out of college, and um, I, I was really into hang gliding. And I got a job as a hang glider test pilot at Vern's Wing Shop here in Bakersfield. And um, when the hang glider uh, uh, part of the business folded, I was out of work. And I asked him if uh, I could get a job there building wings. And that's what this is the kind of work they did, is they did um, uh, mainly uh, Stearman wings uh, for crop dusters okay. and they put me to work on that and I was there a year and a half and then I ended up starting my own <laughs> and went into business by my, you know, for myself. And you've been here ever since? I've been here since 1976. Oh yeah. my goodness, man so that is 19. super neat. So just as a ballpark, how many customers do you have? Do you have regular customers? You have people who are find you brand new, they don't know where else to go. Like, how does that work with the people that you work with? I have repeat customers. Okay. Um, and I do have new customers. So now that I've been in this 42 years and I'm pretty much at the top of my game, uh, people know who to call, you know? I mean, I for, you know, for wood aircraft structures. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and I do do the engineering. I've studied the math and I know the, um, how these things work. And, and uh, so that gives me an advantage over some, uh, just somebody that's a mechanic. Right. You know. right, that makes sense. Now speaking of advantages, can you tell us maybe one advantage of a wood aircraft over an aluminum aircraft? Is there an advantage there that, that can be said, at least with all the technology that's out well, there? Um, we have a, an example over here of an airplane that I built myself and it's made completely out of wood, and the cost of that was extremely low. 
Uh, you can buy the you can buy the Sitka spruce and the and the mahogany plywood that go into these airplanes for um, very inexpensive. Where aluminum is a lot more expensive. Sure, and you have to have specialized material, I'm sure, with aluminum, like you said, riveting and whatever right. else. Right, and so the the I would say the cost is the biggest uh, advantage to the wood, and then the other advantage is that anybody with just rudimentary uh, wood tools and some and a little bit of woodworking ex experience can do this yeah. it's not it's not really all that uh, specialized now I've I've developed my own techniques for production and I've been in production for a long time so um, uh, I, I you know I've got a little bit of an advantage there right but, right certainly no doubt well we want to see a couple of the things that you are working on here in just a little bit and of course we want to know a little bit about the math that goes on because yeah. Something like this. There's got to be some math behind it all. There's a, there is. It's, um, it's algebra, and there's some trigonometry. Okay. There's geometry. Um, that's about it. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple stuff, really. Good. So yeah. with some simple tools and some simple math, who knows? We could be making some wood airplanes by the weekend. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> and man, this is real world stuff. Look up in the sky. You see those airplanes flying, and Pete's going to tell us a little bit more about how they get up there. So everybody's That's interested right. about, I, I know I'm interested in how that happens. Uh, you got a little bit of um, information here for us and there's all kinds of things to look at, but real uh, generically, right? Real simply, uh -huh. this is the side section of a wing. How in the world do we get this big, huge aircraft or smaller aircraft in your case off the ground? I mean, it's got some weight to it, Sure. right? You can't just throw it up there and it stays. Uh, lift is kind of what we're looking at, right? Lift, yeah. and, and lift is generated by the wing, obviously. Okay, so okay. if we're looking at the wing from the side view, yeah, what's it happening? Looks, it here? looks like this. This okay. is what we call an airfoil, okay. and there's many different designs of airfoils. It depends a lot on how fast the airplane is, what, kind, what its purpose is, right. and uh, there's many, many different airfoils. And what we do as engineers is we choose the correct airfoil for the airplane. Now, I want to, I want to, I want to say this, that if you can take a flat plate that's angled to the wind, if the air is blowing this way, mm -hmm. what happens is it can't go through there, so what happens is it deflects, it deflects down, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that creates a triangle, basically, because here, here it was coming straight in this way, and now it's deflected, and this is the amount of lift that that will produce. Okay. Now, the problem is, what happens when the air the air is attacking here is it starts to burble over the over the leading edge uh, this being the leading edge if the if the wing is going this way mm -hmm. the air will actually start to burble and it'll also start to tumble over the back side as it goes off and that is a, a loss of lift so what the what the shape that we design does is it actually smooths the air out so that there are no burbles and the, the better we get this to flow, this is called laminar flow, the better it flows over that airfoil, the longer it stays lifting, okay? okay. At some point, when the air is, is, is attacking, we call it the angle of attack, this, when, when this is it, called alpha. When alpha gets too high, then even an airfoil-shaped airfoil will start to burble, and that's what we call the stall. And it doesn't lose complete lift. It'll lose most of its lift, mm -hmm. but it won't just fall like people think. It will, uh, the, 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 you know, you get this wing out there, it's still going to be developing some lift. Sure, sure. Yeah. And we have all kinds of forces going on with right. an aircraft, right? You talked about lift, right. but of course counteracting the lift is the weight right. of the vessel, right? right? And that's going to be, those things, I'm assuming lift has to be bigger than weight. In other words, it won't get off the ground, right? Well. The force of the lift has to be bigger than the force of the weight? It, lift, the lift is going to equal the weight okay. as long as the airplane is in equilibrium. Uh, okay. So, right, right. And, and if it's accelerating, that means that the, the thrust is greater than the drag. That makes sense. If it's decelerating, then the drag is more than the thrust. Gotcha. And if now, anyone's looked out the window of an airplane and seen on a wing, they have the little levers that go up and that's making more drag and that's how it decelerates. Is that correct? I hope uh, I'm right. Somewhat, yes. Okay, good. They're, I'm a little bit right. They're, what they are is called spoilers. You'll yeah. look out on the wings and there'll be a, a, a flat plate will come up this way right. and that's a spoiler and the air coming the air coming over that wing it gets tumbled like that right. and that will create a lot of a lot more drag and the airplane will come down. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Now you'll also find um, that they will drop what we call flaps down oh, here. Right. Now what those flaps do is increase the lift. 
because here again, we're going to deflect more, more air down. Yeah, and that goes back to the example you had of the flat wing and the triangle. Yeah, That's that right. makes sense. Yeah, okay. so on the jets, they actually do what they call Venetian blind uh, flaps, where they'll have flaps on flaps. So it'll be a flap here, oh. and then it'll have another flap like this. I mean, they really get serious about directing that air downward. Right, well, they have a little weight to get off the ground, that's, so that makes sense. And that's why these things can go 500 miles an hour and yet land at 100 miles an hour. Wow. That's, that, 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 that weight um, is, it doesn't change, the weight doesn't change, right. the air density doesn't change, but the, uh, the thing that we can do is increase the lift of the wing and that'll, that'll allow it to slow down and we can sh I can show that in this formula. And there's all kinds of formulas we can use here. With a little, like it's a little bit of algebra, we have a lot of uh, variables that can change. Right. And one of the things you just talked about was the air density, is that right? Air density okay. changes. So is that depends on where you are flying. So, right. So That's here in Bakersfield, can you give us an sure. idea of what the air density is like compared to in the, somewhere in the mountains or somewhere next to the ocean or something? Sure, down at sea level here, it, um, the air density is a standard uh, um, weight of about 14 pounds per, per um, square inch okay, okay? On, on our bodies right now 14 psi we call it okay up high you'll have maybe um, it may go down to as low as six okay yeah and um, the uh, the way we do it in in aerodynamics is it's this function Q here and Q represents the um, um, half of the air density, which is, is specified as rho, mm -hmm. and, and at sea level, rho equals 0 0.002378. That is slugs, and that's in slugs, oh, man. which is, uh, an, again, is an imperial unit right, right. of acceleration of mass. Yeah. Okay. And this is such an amazing science. And usually science is done with a metric system, but we were talking earlier that flight aviation is done in imperial units, and we got to talk about that. Man, there's so much stuff to talk uh, yeah. about. Man, it's so cool. <laughs> so when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, units that are used in aviation, maybe check out some wings and the design that they are made in with, to create lift. Talking about flight, we have a wing in front of us. We saw some math formulas a little while ago. But this is one you're working on, Pete. Tell yeah. us a little bit about what's happening, what's in front of us, and All right. um, gosh, there's a lot that goes into this. A lot yeah. of internal structures that you don't see if the whole thing is complete, right? That's right. This is a lower wing for a Stearman biplane. Okay. Now, they were used as trainers in World War II, and then in the 1950s and 60s, they made a great crop duster. Uh, in the 70s, they were replaced by modern crop dusters. Right. So a lot of these Stearmans that were crop dusters are being turned back into World War II vintage airplanes okay. and by the owners. They were all made out of wood and what happened to this particular one is uh, the, for whatever reason the pilot lost control on landing and he, he dragged the, this, this rear spar on the ground and the load was uh, transferred to the support and that's where it broke. Okay. And that's where these things will break and that's what we call the, this is the highest moment. When we get into moments and uh, moments of inertia, we're going we're gonna to talk about all that. But it broke right here. I was able to cut the broken part off right about here and splice in with a scarf joint to the old wood. And this is a FAA approved repair for this particular um, damage. In order to do that, I had to replace all of these with brand new pieces and splice them in these haven't been done yet. I'm still working on this one. They've been spliced on the bottom, but not the top. And this wing will get completely repaired, and then it'll be covered with a um, Dacron fabric and, um, and a, air, a special aircraft paint called air, airplane dope. Oh, yeah. and, wow. and it'll be, um, and this is a good example right here of, of fabric that's been doped. And it's very, very strong. So this, this, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Wow. So it's a mix, looks to me, of uh, some of the old wood that you could salvage and some new wood that needed to be repaired. Right. And ultimately, this has a very specific angle and a specific curvature to give this vessel the correct amount of lift, right? Right. Uh, this, this particular airfoil is an NACA 2213. Okay. And NACA did a lot of research back in the, in the 20s and 30s on different airfoil shapes that uh, we were just talking about. Right. 
And this particular one, I happen to like this, this airfoil. This airfoil creates a lot of lift, it's low drag, but it worked perfect for the Stearman. Okay, and, and can this plane go really fast? It, or is this not so much for no, speed? Not, not so much for speed. <laughs> yeah, it's for, it's for lumbering around and teaching students how to fly. Right, now yeah. speaking about students then, that's a really good, uh -huh. um, you kind of jog my mind there. This kind of shop is not on every street corner. I mean, it just isn't around. You are you have kind of a niche market here, but if someone was really interested in flight, right, and maybe even repairing some wings, where would they start? Where would you suggest a student started if they were, were interested in aviation? I would say uh, make sure you get your math, uh, your math background, okay. algebra, right. geometry, uh, get some trigonometry, and uh, take your physics classes. The physics is really what makes this this all makes sense to you. Okay. So do really well in math, do really well in physics, and then um, then you go to an aviation uh, college, mm -hmm. like um, there, there are several around. Right. And right. then they can teach you specifics. Now, there aren't a whole lot of us doing this w aircraft woodwork anymore, uh, so it's very, very much a niche, but um, there's still a demand. There's still 100,000 airplanes still on the registry that are made out of wood. Wow. A hundred thousand of them. Oh my and gosh. there's only a few of us that, that repair them. Yeah. <laughs> so you really do have a kind of a niche market there. Yeah. Now, all kinds of things, all kinds of directions we could go with this conversation. We're going to have to come back and see you. But we, you obviously have a very specific structure you use. We could probably talk about engines and about how they make the force that goes into it, yeah. about how much fuel something holds and about the structure of the body of the, there's just all kinds of stuff yeah. to do there. There's a lot of trigonometry in here and you can see the trigonometry going on in the truss here. Right. There's trusses, there's beams, right. there's, uh, here's another truss and, it, and there's compression loads. There's torsional loads, and I want to get into all that at a later yeah, time. Yeah, no doubt. Gosh, there's so many exciting things, and ultimately, what it does is it gets something in the air, right? And that's probably what, what and caught safely. your interest. And safely. safely, that's right. Yeah. And safely back down to the ground, yeah. that's right. So. Well, we want to leave you with, of course, the, uh, the famous do the math tile. We even picked a spot for it, maybe right here on the, on the wing. I don't know, maybe not. That'll be inside the plane at some point, but... Um, Thanks so much for your time. Gosh, we learned a lot, and I think, I know, at least, at least I am, still intrigued about, you know, maybe the other half of the shop or all the other things we could do. Yeah. Uh, so we'll make sure we come back and visit you sometime You're soon. Back Gosh, time. this is a super cool place. Math in the real world does not stop, and we'll be back next time. Yeah.